What's up everybody? Hope you're having a great day. So as different states and countries are opening up and people are getting out and about more, there's tons of people who are going hiking, camping, going on adventures, and already people are getting in trouble, getting lost. Just recently, a, a large group of people got stranded in a location not far from me because of some flash flooding. You never know who it's going to be, but people get in trouble. So this video is going to work. I'm going to list off these items, and then I'm going to go into the description about them. Number one is a first aid kit. Number two is water. Three is a knife. Four is a fire starter. Five is a signaling device. Six is rope. Seven is a flashlight. Eight is a compass. Nine is a battery bank for your cell phone. And number ten is a little bit of food. Now, a first aid kit, I almost didn't include in this video because it seemed like just pure common sense to me. But because of the importance of it, I'm including it in the video. So all you need in a first aid kit is some band-aids, some gauze, a little bit of tape, some antiseptic ointment and antiseptic wipes. And something else that I really recommend is a couple packets of Cellox. If you don't know what Cellox is, Cellox is this product that came out a little while back actually. It's a really good product for stopping bleeding. Uh, it's actually been used to stop arterial bleeding in the past. Really good product. Number two is water. Now, water is an interesting one. What I see a lot of people do is they'll carry water in just a plastic bottle, either just a canteen or a brinky dinky plastic bottle from Walmart or whatever. That's a no-no. If you run out of water and you don't have access to clean water to refill the bottle, you can boil it in the bottle, but every time you boil it, your bottle is going to shrink and it's going to release more toxins into your water. Not a good long-term solution. Option one would be to have a USGI canteen set like this, which contains the cup, and I've also got the stove, which you can use uh, solid fuel tablets or small amounts of wood to actually cook or boil the water inside the canteen. Option two is a steel water bottle like this one, although I recommend one larger. And a tip for metal water bottles, aluminum works as well, I'm just not a fan of aluminum, is to make sure your gasket is not on the bottle itself, but on the lid. Now on the subject of water, another really good thing to keep would be a micro water filter and a collapsible water bag like this. The pro to these micro water filters, especially this one, is that it's threaded and it'll actually screw directly onto a soda or water bottle. And the threads on this collapsible bag are the same as a soda or water bottle, so this filter screws directly onto it and you can use it like a squeeze system. This filter also contain, comes with a straw in the packaging so that you can put this directly in the water and just drink straight. Optionally, you can use a pump filter as well if you have space for it in your bag. A tip though, if you're doing a lot of hiking or long-term camping, a pump filter would definitely be a better option. The water's gonna taste better and you can get more of it without having to work as hard. Number three is a knife. Do not underestimate the importance of a knife. A knife is, a knife can be used to create almost all the tools on this table, if you got the know-how. It doesn't have to be a super expensive knife. It doesn't have to be a 60, 100 plus dollar knife. You can just buy a, uh, a $20 more companion. I think they're about $20. I haven't bought one in a long time. Mine's been lasted me quite a while. But the important thing is, is for it to be a fixed blade knife, or at the very least, a quality folding knife. Number four is a fire starter. Do not underestimate the importance of a fire starter, especially one that can survive a plunge in the river or ocean or any water for that matter. This one is a ferroserum rod and they will function even when they are wet. It is hard to light wet materials with a ferro rod, but when it's wet, it doesn't lose its abilities. You can also keep a pack of matches or a Bic lighter. Bic lighter is great in a waterproof container. Again, these take up no, virtually no space. Next up is a signaling device. This is a small little signaling mirror, and I actually carry this thing in my wallet. That's how small it is. And I've 
posted videos before where I've used this and you can see this tiny little thing from a long ways off using my drone. Another thing to keep in mind would also be a keep a whistle. If it's cloudy and you can't use your signal mirror, you can also use your whistle. Now the international code for distress is three short blasts, three long blasts, and three short blasts. And that works with both light and sound. So number six is rope. Rope is another one of those things that's really underestimated. This is extremely useful to have. And in this case, it's paracord. It's got seven inner strands. Each inner strand has the ability to hold approximately 50 static pounds. Now that's important to remember what static pounds and working load is. The actual cord itself will hold a static load of 50 pounds. If you don't know the difference between static and working loads, a static load is how much weight the cordage can hold sitting perfectly still with no swing, no working whatsoever. The working load is what it can actually handle while it's moving, swinging, you're swinging with it. Paracord is not a climbing rope. Number seven is a flashlight. Again, another one of those things that since I've started carrying one daily, it's amazing how much I use this thing. But if you get stranded at night, you, the last thing you want to do is be fumbling around in the dark, twist your ankle or break your knee from a hole or worse. So a flashlight and a spare battery to go with it. And this flashlight also has a strobe feature. Number eight is a compass. Again, this is one of those things that really doesn't take up that much space, but it can be remarkably useful. If you get lost and you know there's a river north of you or south of you, or you know there's some really large identifiable feature that you cannot miss that would increase your chances of being rescued or seen, this will help you find it. Number nine, I thought about this one for a little bit, but it actually makes sense, is I have a small battery pack for your phone. We as a civilization have came so far in terms of technology that our cell phones now have the ability not only to make long distance calls, but also GPS, positioning, all kinds of stuff. So if you can get yourself to the top of a mountain or somewhere where you can get reception just to make a call for emergency services to triangulate your position, that can be critical. So I actually do recommend keeping a small battery pack in your kit as well. Now last, I made this last because the human body on average can last, last about three weeks without food. So unless you're a special case where you know, you're diabetic and you need to keep your blood sugar up or uh, you know, manage your body some specific way due to you know, whatever X and X disease it is. Food, it doesn't have to be a lot, especially if you're not diabetic or not whatever. This is just a couple pack, a couple things. I have an MRE. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be anything that you like, but just a little bit of food. Something that will give you a little boost of energy, a little boost of morale after you get lost and you're freaking out and you know, all that other mess. So with that said, these are 10 very simple items and all of these actually fit in this here bag. This is just a little rinky dinky sling bag that I bought to play around with. It's, you know, all these items fit in here. And even when it's full, that bag does not weigh that much. An honorable mention, however, is this. If you don't know what this is, this is a survival tarp. Uh, survival tarps usually are brightly colored on one side and have a reflective mylar material on the inside. It'll keep you warm during the cold and it'll keep you cool during the summer. The plus side to having bright colors on both sides is that while you have this set up, you're also really easy to see from the air. The next honorable mention is a folding saw. This saw has seen some days. I've had this saw forever. And uh, one day, I dropped it while I was in a tree and found it later on, which is why it's got this rust on it. But even despite that, it still cuts well. But in the situation of being lost or stranded, being able to cut small limbs and trees to fashion shelter and other tools is really nice, and it takes a workload off of your knife. You can do all the same things with your knife, but using a saw for those tasks will make your, the edge on your knife last longer. 
And then lastly, I didn't bring one out, but is a small fishing kit. Just a few small hooks and some spider wire is really all you need. A couple little uh, pinch sinkers too. That's really all you need. And again, you know, something that size, you can fit it into a little medicine bottle. It doesn't take up that much space. So with that said, guys, if you think I missed anything, drop it down in the comments. I've got links to some of the products that are here on this table in the description. So with that said, guys, if you're new to the channel, drop down and hit that bell dingling icon down below. You'll get notified every single time I upload a new video. Like, subscribe, comment, all the normal stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Share this video. This is really important information, especially now that a lot of people are going back out in the woods. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next week.